Okay, in this video, we are gonna do four good chain rule problems. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, we got if h of x is f squared of x minus g squared of x, f prime of x is negative g of x, and g prime of x is f of x, then h prime of x equals. So you can see there's a lot of like function switching going on here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite h of x, but kind of color code it so that'll look like this. So I've made f purple and g kind of blue, I guess. Let's actually find the derivative. This is just gonna be a normal chain rule problem at this point. So we're gonna get h prime is gonna be a two and then f of x and then times f prime of x, which I'm gonna color code uh, to be a different color. So I'm gonna use green here um, and then minus two g of x times g prime, which I'm gonna color code as like a, I don't know, I'm gonna call it pink. I don't really think it is, but pink it is. Um, okay, so now uh, we need to work out what to do, but we have these rules, right? So the rules are f prime is negative g of x and g prime is f of x. So I'm gonna color code those. So we have this, f prime is uh, negative g and g prime is f. So now because of the color coding, it's really easy to do this problem. Um, without it, you know, you wanna really think it through clearly or maybe use different colors on your own, or you know, a pen and a pencil, whatever you think, or maybe a highlighter. Um, so I can see that f prime is gonna become negative g of x, so we're gonna make that swap, and then g prime will just become f of x. Uh, so let's make those changes. So we have our two f of x, our f prime will become that negative g of x, which we can clearly see because of the colors, and then um, negative two g of x, g prime will become f of x. So we have this, and then we just wanna clean it up. So uh, you have two, basically negative two f times g minus two g times f, which is just gonna give us negative four f times g. Look at the answer choices. You can see that that is option C. Highlighting the use of color here, um, I don't know how practical that is when you're doing a lot of problems, but it's extremely useful, especially when you find things a little confusing. Let's take a look at another one. If the derivative of f of x is g of x and the derivative of g of x is f of x squared, we wanna find the second derivative of f of x cubed. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm also gonna change from this uh, differential operator notation to just prime notation, because I think that's easier to work with on this problem. Um, so that means I'm gonna say f prime is g of x and that g prime is, um, now this one's a little weird, it's f of not x, it's f of x squared. And that later in the problem, I think I'm actually gonna rewrite again, but let's leave it like that for now. Uh, so we gotta find this derivative, so let's rewrite this. Uh, we're, we're being told basically that y is f of x cubed, and we wanna find the second derivative, so y double prime, or uh, using differential operator notation, which I hate saying is just the second derivative. Uh, so y prime, or dy dx, is gonna be f prime of x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, so times three x squared. Okay, I'm gonna uh, rewrite this now using one of our rules, right? So one of our rules is that f prime is g of x, so really at this point, I have that dy dx is three x squared g of x cubed. So now we'll find the derivative of this because we're ultimately looking for the second derivative. So this is just a product rule with a little chain rule thrown in, so it's gonna be first, Derivative of the second is gonna be uh, g prime of x cubed times three x squared plus second, which is g of x cubed, derivative of the first, which is six x. Okay, so we have this. Now at this point, because this is multiple choice, if you look at all the answers, we're done. Because of that six x right there, the only answer it could possibly be is d, but I'm gonna carry on with the problem anyway. We do need to, looking at the answers, there's no primes in it anywhere. So we need to change this g prime into f somehow. When you look up here, this is g prime of x is f of x squared. Sometimes people find that confusing, so I find it useful to just rewrite it using u instead of x. So what that would mean is that g prime of u is f of u squared, and in this case, in our particular problem, u is just gonna be x cubed, so we're gonna do x cubed squared. So overall, that's gonna give me nine x to the fourth, and then it's gonna become f of u squared, so f of x to the sixth, and then the six X, which was the key to just picking the answer, and then G of X cubed. I mean, honestly, if you look at all the answer choices, it, it really seems like D should be the answer because looking at the original problem, the answer should be a little complicated and the other ones are just too simple. Um, 
Okay, let's take a look at another problem. This will be a slightly different flavor of problem. Um, it's not going to be just notational. We can actually do it, um, but it's still weird. They're playing with like the concept of variables here. So if y is x squared plus 2, u is 2x minus 1, then we want to find dy du, but y is not a function of u, y is a function of x, and u is a function of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code everything to give us this, y is x squared plus 2, u is 2x minus 1. Then I'm going to write down the chain rule. So if I'm looking for dy du, uh, that's going to be dy dx. So I'm just starting with that because that's what is the first thing. That's the independent variable, right? No, sorry, the dependent variable is y. So I'm starting with dependent variable, which is a function of x. So dy dx. Time, what do I have to multiply by to get dy du? It would have to be dx du. So times dx du. Now, I'm going to need to work out dx du. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to rewrite this as x is equal to u plus 1 over 2. It is also true that dx d2 is, d, what? dx du is the reciprocal of du dx. If you, so du dx you can see is just 2. So dx du is going to be 1 half. But it's a little easier for some people at this stage to just rewrite it. Up to you which one you want to do. But dy du is going to be uh, dy dx, which is just 2x, times dx du, which we can see from x equals u plus 1 over 2 is 1 half, but also dx du is the reciprocal of du dx, and du dx is definitely 2. So either way, you're going to get 1 half there. So you have 2x times 1 half, which has like a shockingly simple answer of just x. So that's our answer. Um, alternatively, you could have just rewritten y, right? Y is x squared plus 2. We found that x is u plus 1 over 2. Just rewrite it. Then you can just use the chain rule on this thing. And then at the end, you do still need to substitute, though, because um, we have to get uh, our answer to be in terms of x, right? Because we want du, nope, dy du. dy du. dy du is 1 half u plus 1. And we're looking for dy du. Oh, but the answer has x in it. Sorry, I confused myself there for a second. Uh, we know that x is equal to u plus 1 over 2. So this, this whole thing is just x. Turns out for me, the alternative version was harder than just using the chain rule, but you know, what are you going to do? All right, next up. If y is equal to tan of u, u is equal to v minus 1 over v, and v is equal to natural log of x, what is dy dx at x equals e? So we could do all the composition. I definitely don't want to do that. I'm going to instead color code everything and then kind of work my way through it with the chain rule. So here's my color coding. Uh, I'm looking for dy dx. So dy dx should be y is a function of u, so dy du. u is a function of v, so du dv. v is a function of x, so dv dx. That's the chain rule in action. And it's probably the most functional way of using the chain rule. Um, so now we just have to find these things. So uh, dy du is the derivative of a tangent, which is secant squared, so secant squared of u. Du dv, the derivative, uh, so u is v minus 1 over v. So think of that as v minus v to the negative first. So the derivative of v is going to be 1. And then you get uh, minus negative v to the negative second, which becomes plus 1 over v squared. And then v is the natural log of x, and the derivative of that is 1 over x. Okay, so now how do we substitute? Well, we're told that x is equal to e. If x is e, then v is the natural log of e, which is 1. If v is 1, then u is 1 minus 1 over 1, which is 0. And if u is 0, we can just sub that in. Okay, so let's make all of our substitutions. dy dx is going to be secant squared of 0, 1 plus 1 over 1 squared, which is 1, and then 1 over e. So just direct substitutions. Cosine of 0 is 1, so secant is also 1. So if we square it, we just get 1. So we have 1 times 2, 1 over e. So 2 over e is our final answer, and we pick it. All right, so that's four good kind of non-standard uh, chain rule problems that you really want to master before you go into like an AP exam type situation. So I hope this was helpful, and good luck.